Hi, I'm Sudhin Bharatiya on behalf of the Linux Foundation, and my next guest is Kapil Thangavelu, Lead Maintainer of Cloud Custodian. Kapil, it's great to have you back on the show. Happy to be back. We are going to talk about CNC of Cloud Custodian. So can you talk about how are you involved with the project? I founded the project uh, maybe four and a half years ago uh, when I was at Capital One uh, and have been leading it in the open source uh, since April 2016 uh, when we first released it to GitHub. Uh, so I am currently the lead maintainer for the project. Um, we have a group of about a dozen maintainers uh, and over 300 contributors today. And now let's talk about the, the Cloud Custodian project itself. What is it all about? Cloud Custodian is designed to give a policy as code tool uh, for large organizations or any, any organization really that's operating in the cloud. The challenges of cloud governance um, really go across multiple different pillars with regards to security, with regards to compliance, with regards to operations or cost optimization. And these are sort of all the things that you need to be well managed in the cloud. Um, and so what Cloud Custodian does is it gives you a YAML DSL for being able to express policies that then are enforced in an environment. So uh, a policy typically uh, involves three parts or four parts. Uh, one is it defines a resource uh, that you want to enforce a policy on, say uh, a, a, a VM instance, um, and then you apply some filtering uh, to the collection of instances to find the things that you're interested in, say instances that have underutilized CPUs or instances that are on the public internet and don't have um, appropriate IAM permissions uh, associated to them. Uh, and then it lets you take some actions. And so those filters and actions are really fine grained and you can compose them sort of in arbitrary ways. Uh, and the actions might be something like stop the instance, take a snapshot, uh, modified security groups or IAM capabilities. Um, and uh, then finally, there's this notion of a mode, an execution mode. And so an execution mode uh, basically defines how you want to run the policy. Um, the default one is just simply pulling, um, and you can pull the cloud control plane for information about those resources to find and filter to the interesting set. Uh, but the more interesting ones are also event-based, where you're actually able to express that this policy should evaluate things in real time as things are changing. Uh, and so you can do that on sort of the API audit stream of the different public clouds so that you're in effect, in effect able to enforce policy um, in real time as things are changing in your environment. Uh, and those event bindings uh, can take place across dozens of different sources. Uh, we have deep integration with, say, AWS Config or with Guard Duty or with Google Cloud Security Command Center. Um, so there's different signals there. Um, API audit streams are, are probably the most common one that people use, but you also have additional sources, both from first party from the providers themselves, as well as uh, downstream integrations. If I'm not wrong, the project was contributed to CNCF in 2020. Why did you decide to contribute the project to CNCF? And then we'll talk about the governance and everything of the project itself. So we had a lot of contributors from the different cloud providers, from Microsoft, from Amazon, uh, from and then and a large end user community, um, uh, Capital One, uh, Transamerica, 23andMe. Uh, we really have a very diverse set of contributors. Uh, and the notion on moving the project to the foundation was trying to find a good neutral home where all of these diverse collaborators could work on the same project and feel feel safe that the project was in good stewardship, uh, had good governance, that it wouldn't um, that it, and it had that neutral home to continue to receive continued investment and adoption from other users. And a lot of this was, you know, notionally geared towards wanting to become a de facto standard for. Uh, for cloud governance. And we felt like the best way to achieve that was to have a neutral neutral home uh, to, for the project and its collaborations to, to live in. You already explained you know, that a lot of companies are involved. Uh, you, initially, you also mentioned what kind of community is there. I also want to know about the governance structure. The good thing is with most Linux Foundation projects, there is a very, you know, very, very good structure how the project is governed, but sometimes projects choose their own structure. So talk about the governance of uh, Cloud Custodian. So, 
the Linux Foundation, I think, is, is and the CNCF are, are fairly famous for not actually dictating. So we had considered Apache as well. Um, I think the challenge that we saw with the Apache Foundation, and, and, and all hats off, it's a wonderful organization, um, but it's very prescribed with regards to how things must run um, and everything, and that tends to involve a lot of communication overhead. Uh, with Linux Foundation and the CNCF in particular, um, they really don't dictate to a project what governance structure should should be um, outside of it should have one, uh, I think is the most important thing that they, they consider. Um, so currently we're closer to a BDFL type of model. Um, that, you know, that style has sort of fallen out um, over time. Uh, and we're, we're currently sort of looking at whether or not we want to institute that as a rotating structure over time and have it going through a, a maintainer election process to elect that. Um, right now, from a government structure, we also sort of carve out to the different providers. We have a lot of different, um, like no one can know all the cloud, so to speak. And so we have very deep integration capabilities with, with the three major public cloud providers. And so right now it's also a sort of, uh, you know, sub maintainer, uh, or project maintainer on a, on a sub tree, uh, sort of model with regards to people that are able to freely, um, code review and, and commit on different projects. So we have a, a team at Azure that's been um, working on our, our Azure provider for a number of years. And so they run fairly independently with regards to uh, being able to manage and triage on those issues that affect that provider distinctly. This is an open source project, so anybody can go and check it. But if I ask you what kind of roadmap you have or what kind of uh, I mean, the next big thing for the project, if you can share those. Yeah, so we've gotten a, a lot of different capabilities right now onto the different cloud providers. So some of this, one of the largest challenges for a project that's tracking to native capabilities on the cloud is simply keeping up with the pace of innovation of the cloud providers. And in some sense, that is, um, that is a key value chain for why open source is so key in this space, is that it takes community to cover on all of these different capabilities. Um, a recent last, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, I built out a website, awsapichanges.info, uh, simply just to keep track of all of the API changes that were happening uh, within a single cloud provider. And, you know, there are literally dozens of them each week uh, covering off on a diverse array of services. So uh, one of the key focuses for the project is, is to always continue to track that pace of innovation from the underlying providers and make sure that that's reflected in capabilities uh, within custodians such that people can govern on these newer features capability sets. Um, so that that's a key focus area. The secondary um, capabilities uh, are really about um, going into, you know, keeping track with and doing deeper integrations with some of the native capabilities um, on the on providers. So there's new features and then there's the capabilities that the cloud providers them, themselves have in this space with regards to governance. And, um, and one of the key differentiators for custodian is that we actually uh, do deep integration with those capabilities. So we want to be the easiest way for users to use the native capabilities um, using Custodian to help get more productive workflows. Um, as an example, let's take uh, AWS config. Uh, an AWS config rule might be you know, 50 to 100 lines to write a custom rule, and then there are 50 to 100 lines to do the DevOps around that. Uh, with Custodian, you can simply do that in roughly 10 lines of YAML and get something that is functionally equivalent and is a 20x uh, productivity gain. Um, so making sure that we cover off on those capabilities, uh, I think there are some newer capabilities on both the Azure side and, and the GCP side that we'd like to continue to grow on. Uh, we've had some experience with some users operating at large scale within Azure and GCP, and uh, some there's some newer capabilities there with regards to identity that we want to uh, expose. Um, and then finally, you know, I think there's a notion of, you know, now that we're in the CNCF, being able to add additional depth to our Kubernetes integration. Um, it was originally done as sort of a proof of concept and it, you know, it works, but it's very, if you look at what's state of the art for tools in, the, in that particular space and that compute provider um, uh, 
that um, that we need to evolve there to to be to be a best of breed tool. Kapil, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, not only Stacklet but also Plotka Student. And as usual, I love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.